All right, so tonight we are going to talk about the go for no challenge, but before we do that, I want to just kind of recap a little bit of, I'm just going to take that down real quick, a little bit of what the challenge is um, quickly and then share the mindset behind it, and then we can dive into some of maybe the issues that we're having and um, yeah, some of the issues that we're having with it and kind of I don't know, go together and try to like brainstorm how we can creatively work around and find a solution that feels authentic to us. So a lot of times, oh, I think I see my Mimi on the call. I'm excited. Um, I did forget to mute all participants upon entry, so I'm going to do that real quick. Just a minute. Because I know we'll have a much clearer mute upon entry. Okay. Um, okay. So a little bit about the challenge, what we're doing is we're trying to remember that if we do something like an action, we do an action, we are going to reap the benefits if we don't focus on the outcome. And so the whole idea for the go for no challenge isn't even that we get a no, it's just that we get comfortable hearing answers of people. We invite them to something and they say yes or no. And I have been more active in on the front lines that of asking than I have in a long time and it's felt really good so what I'm doing is I'll ask I'll get a response from some people some people don't get a response from and then I screenshot that and I save it to an album in my phone and then upon getting all those answers our goal is to get 100 answers in the month of January I'm going to email them to that email address which is go for no challenge at gmail.com and everyone who completes that gets a mug so um I did see a question today in the group, and I just want to clarify, because Shauna, you said, now, which column does that go in if someone says not now? It really could go in its own column. That's not the not no challenge column. I want just to make sure that everyone understands, though, you don't have to get 100 no's, or you don't have to get 100 yeses. It just has to be 100 accumulative answers. Does that is that all cool? Does everyone understand? Okay, perfect. I'm like, what if someone's going for 100 no's or 100 yeses and thinks that it can't be? So, okay, cool. Wanted to get that away. All right. So, Eli and I, if they don't answer, they don't count. So the goal for me, and this is something that we need to talk about because, um, <laughs> yeah, no one's gonna get 100 no's. I know someone's gonna get a yes, and there's somewhere. Um, the goal for me with these, you know, when I'm sending out these messages, part of it is we can't just blast with, you know, um, without any intuition because that will, there will be no response. And, and so what I've been doing is obviously keeping a very thorough list. And when I get to that person's name, I really think about, okay, what is the best chance of getting a response? If I need to throw in a, Hey, I know this is kind of crazy. We haven't talked in a while, but I just thought of you. I want to know what are your thoughts on learning more about essential oils? Maybe I'll have to throw in that little caveat. Maybe I'll have to come back five days after I send the first message and say, hey, is it okay that I sent you that? I know it's kind of off the wall, but um, I just want to make sure that I didn't, you know, I didn't put anything between us. When you can like feel it with your heart when you're talking, I know Faith, you can do this well, and it's kind of talking to all of us. But you could do it, feel it with your heart on, hey, how can I engage with this person where it feels so much like I'm greeting them in the grocery store or I'm seeing them at our community gathering or whatever it is, um, make it feel friendly. Now, uh, one thing I've learned is say their name. So like, um, and, and honestly, not even just at the beginning, like, um, but like use their name and engage with them as much as possible. It'll just, it'll strengthen that. So Starting in 2021, Eli and I started reading this book called Atomic Habits, and I would love to just share a little bit of synopsis of this, this book. How many, just curious, you can do your little uh, re reactions, raise your hand if you have read Atomic Habits. Okay, Shauna says she has that book. Atomic Habits is a very similar book to The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, if you're familiar with it, and basically what it talks about is the magic of uh, ge geometric progression. So we're familiar with geometric progression in our business because we understand that if we ask, if we you know do the d double the penny every day type thing, we'll end up getting you know uh, over a million dollars in a month or something crazy like that. Um, but I uh, had never thought of it in terms of actually building a lifestyle. So using the power of geometric progression to build a lifestyle. And I'm going to share what I mean here in a second. I'm trying to copy this link onto my computer. 
Okay, copy link. Actually, I'll just I'll, I'll read it on my phone so I don't have to copy it. All right, so listen to this story. This is insane. The fate of British cycling changed one day in 2003. The organization, which was the governing body for professional cycling in Great Britain, had recently hired Dave Brailsford as its performance director. At the time, professional cyclists in Great Britain had endured nearly 100 years of mediocrity. <laughs> Since 1908, British riders had won just a single gold medal at the Olympic Games. And they had fared even worse in cycling the biggest race, the Tour de France. In 110 years, no British cyclist had ever won the event. In fact, the performance of British riders had been so underwhelming that one of the top bike, bike manufacturers in Europe refused to sell bikes to the team because they were afraid that it would hurt sales if other professionals saw the Brits using their gear. Brailsford had been hired to put British cycling on a new trajectory. What made him different from previous coaches was that it was his relentless commitment to a strategy that he referred to as the aggregation of marginal gain, which was the philosophy of searching for tiny margin of improvement in multiple areas in everything you do. Brailsford said the whole principle came from the idea that if you broke everything down, you could think uh, if you broke everything you could think of that goes into riding a bike and then improve it by just one percent you will improve your you will have a significant increase when increase when you put them all together brailsford and his coaches began by taking making small adjustments you might expect from a professional cycling team they redesigned the bike seat to make them more comfortable and they rubbed alcohol on the tires for a better grip they asked riders to wear electrically heated over shorts to maintain ideal muscle temperature while riding and using biofeedback sensors to monitor how each athlete responded to a particular workout. The team tested various fabrics in a wind tunnel and had their outdoor riders switch to indoor racing suits, which proved to be lighter and more aerodynamic. But they didn't stop there. Railsford and his team continued to find 1% improvements in overlooked and unexpected areas. They tested different types of massage gels to see which one led to the fastest muscle recovery. They hired a surgeon to teach each rider the best way to wash their hands to reduce the, to reduce the chances of catching a cold. They determined the type of pillow and mattress that led to the best night of sleep for each rider. They even painted the inside of the team truck white, which helped them spot little bits of dust that would normally slip by unnoticed and could potentially degrade the performance of finely tuned bikes. <laughs> all of these hundred, all, all, um, as these and hundreds of other small improvements accumulated, the results came faster than anyone could have imagined. Just five years after Brailsford took over, the British cycling team dominated the road and track cycling events at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, where they won an astounding 60% of the gold medals available. For, <laughs> this is crazy, four years later, when the Olympic Games came to London, the Brits raised the bar and they set nine Olympic records and seven world records. That same year, Bradley Wiggins became the first British cycle cyclist to win the Tour de France. The next year, his teammates Chris Froome won the race. He would go on to win again, 15, 16, 2017, giving the British team five Tour de France victories in six years. It goes on and on and on. It's, it's all about the aggregation of marginal gains. And so as Eli and I were listening to this, you know where my mind went? It was, oh, yeah, okay, well, you know what? I got to make some big changes. And that's what we always think about when we think about changing habits. Gotta, and then Eli pointed out to me, he's like, we need to pause the book because we're listening to it on headphones. He's like, we need to pause the book and talk about this. And he started telling me how, or not telling me, but he was just sharing his perspective of the book, how it's actually more about finding the 1%. It's not about focusing the 10% or the 20% because, you know, we start a new workout program. What do we want to do? Minute, hour a day. That's actually way more than 1%.
of a change. And so what are the 1% changes that we can use in our business to help create massive long-term differences? And I'll tell you one thing that came to mind. Me too, Faith. It's been really cool to read it together. I like to give him one of my ears, <laughs> my ear pods of the ear. Um, the, if every single time, let's say I want to lose 10 pounds in, in the year of 2021. Let's just say, let's say I want to lose 10 pounds in 2021. My tendency, again, is to set out an hour of workout time, but that's actually more than 1%. What if instead of that, I said, I'm going to drink eight ounces of water before I eat one of my three meals every day? And what if because I drank that water, I wanted 50 calories less in that meal because I felt a little bit more full. Well, it would only be about 150 calories less a day, but in 20 days, that would be one pound. And in the course of 12 months, that would be about 10 pounds. So how crazy is it that just a small little habit change of drinking a cup of water before I eat would potentially give me a 10 pound difference in one year. So thinking about it in the business, what do we want to do? We want to go out and enroll a million people, when in reality, what are some little micro shifts, some little tiny atomic habits we could do, which by the way, if you guys want to read this book, I think I highly, highly recommend it. I think it'd be amazing. One of the things that I thought of for myself was, what if every time I go into the grocery store, every time I go into the gas station, I make it a habit to just ask the, the person checking me out. You know, it doesn't sound crazy, but have you ever heard of essential oils? Like, are you, are you into essential oils? And if she says, or he says, no, I don't know about them. What if I said, do you want me to send you some information? These little oils are really cool and they've changed my life. Obviously, that's just one example. And nobody has to do it all. But that's one thing that I could do that over the course of a year would absolutely build into be 1%. So what I would like to do tonight, as we're as we're mapping out kind of, you know, what are these 2021 20, things we've got? Um, I want to do I want to do breakout sessions and and maybe just brainstorm together. What are some of those one percent? And make sure it's only one percent. What are some of those one percent things that we could start doing habitually to change the trajectory of our business? And then while you guys are doing the breakout sessions, and I'm just gonna let the it go the way it's supposed to go. It's going to be random. I'm just going to assign it, you know, equal amounts of people to rooms. I'm not going to strategize with it. I'm going to plan some uh, objectives that we're getting with these go for no challenge or go for the ask challenge. And, and we can just talk and brainstorm through that for the remainder of the time. So let's plan to spend uh, the next five minutes just kind of brainstorming, put down any little atomic habit you can think of, tiny little 1% change, 1% thing to grow your business. And we can just round table it with whoever's in your group. All right, breakout rooms. Assign automatically, create, we're gonna do seven. Boom, here we go. Open all rooms. everybody at the same time, which it means, I, I know that means, I know what that means, it means I didn't give you enough time. <laughs> How was it? What I would love to hear kind of what some of you guys came up with. That was so, so good. We need so much more time than five minutes. <laughs> what? Okay, Shelby, tell me, tell me all the good things. 
So one of the things that we talked about was um, reaching out on social media to one person that you prospected or made a new friend with the previous day. Um, potentially either interacting on their social media or like I suggested sending the that video of Gary and like how we founded Young Living that super like touchy feely video that makes me cry a little bit every time I watch it to those people. That's good. Anybody else? Well, I was in Shelby's group, but um, <laughs> I was there too. Um, it was fun. We had a good time. Um, but yeah, so I said like, oh, I want like I want to set aside thirty minutes to like follow up with people. And then Shelby's like, well, that sounds like more than one percent. I was like, oh, that's so interesting. How about five minutes and one person? And she's like, ah, yeah. And I'm like, it's so great because I could see that's where then it starts to feel overwhelming when it's not in like really small bite-sized pieces that I can chew. And then I'm like, just to get like overwhelmed and then don't do it. So that was really, that was really great. And like talking about like basically just doing small tasks every day. Yeah. I think, I think that's it. You're, it's like, okay. Whenever we're coaching people on how to incorporate oils into their lifestyle, you know, this, there's this trick that I think we all know, and that's tie it to a routine. So every time you blank, you should blank. So every time you brush your teeth, you should put a drop of Progestin Plus under your habit stacking. Yes, Victoria, I've never even heard that term, but you just nailed it. It's like you already brush your teeth every night, so why not do your Progestin Spin? You already drink your smoothie in the morning, put your Ningxia in it. Habit stacking. So with this, the most powerful way that I found to make habits actually stick is to tie them to something that I'm routinely doing. So that's good. Okay. How did you guys both learn this term? How, what, why did, have I never heard this before? <laughs> that's awesome. Love to look into that. Um, planner community. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. Good to know. I'll look into that. So, okay. Um, for the remainder of the time, which is five minutes, I would love to kind of hear your thoughts on how is the reaching out going in order, to, in an effort to get responses, yes, no, or not now um, from people. How is that going? And can we troubleshoot with anyone? Is it going great? You want to just share how great it's going? Um, we'd love to just collaborate on that if anyone wants to unmute themselves. I wanted to just ask a question about that. Like I had like um, 72 no responses. So how do we like, should I ever go back to them again? Should I wait it out? It, you know, I, I know someone else had that question too. I saw an OQ, so. It's such a good question. So the good news is, first of all, it's only been four days at max. So some people are still not even on their social media. And if they've seen it, like their little profile has dropped down there. Well, that is, you know, either they've seen it and they don't want to respond, which is possible. They've seen it and they forgot to respond or their child swiped it open and they haven't even seen it. And it looks like they've seen it. So what I like to do, and I saw Shauna that you have that amazing like columns going and you've got all their names written down and everything. What I like to do is circle back like three or four or five days later and just send a voice message specifically. And I'm like, hey, and then I'll say their name. Hey, I hope it's okay that I just sent that message the other day. If you're not interested, seriously, no big deal. I just wanted to reach out because you were on my mind. And um, yeah, I just love these oils and I'm always thinking everyone's going to love them. So, uh, you know what? You know, no worries at all. Whenever you get a chance, just let me know. Also, how was your Christmas? How was your New Year's? How was your Hanukkah? Whatever, you know, and just kind of connect. But like open up that doorway for them to be like, they can take a big deep breath and go, oh, if I say no, it's not going to harm the friendship. And that, that's my personal route. Does anyone have any other, uh, anything else that they do that they like when someone doesn't respond? Um, this is Beth. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I think, yeah, you know, okay. it's definitely one of those, you know, growing and expanding our network thing where it's the hack of, you know, going into their page, see what's going on with them, liking their images, posting on them like, hey, oh my gosh, everybody, you know, looks so cute in their jammies. And then again, asking questions, things like that, where, um, you know, maybe not necessarily blowing up their page, but something where they're like, oh yeah, so-and-so messaged me, you know, or whatever. 
That's, I love that because it's a gentle, like, hey, I see you, I'm here, without, um, yeah, without, yeah, just kind of opening up that relationship. I love that. And I have also, something. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, great. No, I was just going to say, also, I need jammies that match so someone can say that to me. <laughs> That's so, so funny. Great. And you've got a little crew now, too, so. Um, I really like to bring in some of this, like a little bit more, maybe like spiritual component where like, for me, I like, I kind of, uh, think about like, okay, I, I have this thing to offer and like, I want the right people to come. And then that also plays into like taking the action. Cause the idea is like, take action, put yourself out there. It's a hundred responses. That's very clear. That's not like some flowery spiritual idea, right? It's like clear and it's concrete, but then there's this other piece too, because somebody that I've been just thinking about, um, that I thought would be so great that I haven't talked to in months. And I did mention oils to her before. And she was like, I don't want to be a part of any of that, blah, 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 whatever. She didn't really even give it a chance, but it doesn't matter because I was like, oh, I'm going to reconnect with her. She commented on my photo today on social media. And I was like, I was just thinking about you. We have to get on the phone. So it's like, you know, something like that, where it's like bringing in a little bit of like, I guess I would call it like divine assistance, you know, like thinking about there's other stuff than just me and the action I'm taking going on here. There's the law of attraction. You don't even have to think of it spiritually. It could be science, you know, it says quantum physics. So it's, I think that's good to put in. All right like you and Beth both just vocalize like exact like I'm like oh yeah I totally do that I just didn't think to like I didn't remember that just now so thank you for saying that Grace so like and I think there's a piece of us a little bit of us when when someone asks us you know you might be a part of my journey you might not it's totally cool either way there's like a little piece of us at least for me that I'm like no I am like don't you like I have this like desire to say yes so that's fun um, what did mom, what did, oh, mom said so good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Mommy said so good. Very cool. Well, if it seems to be going well for you and you're like, Hey, I'm doing great. I'm getting 3.333 a day <laughs> answers and I'm on track then very good. I know I personally am three behind, like I'm not, I'm at like nine responses and I should be at 12. So if you're there too, Hey, we're in this together. And you know what? Um, if you go to the grocery store, and you ask the lady at the counter, Betty, hey, Betty, because I met her today. Hey, Betty, do you want to learn about essential oils? And Betty says, no, that counts. Like, I'm going to reward that and honor that. Like, I know you can't find her social media. You're just going to send it her name in a in an email or whatever. But you did that work. And you can definitely get an answer because someone's not going to just ignore you. They're going to say yes or no. So we can do that, too. Lisa, yes, go for it. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Bethany. Yeah, I was just, I just have a question because I'm really new to this and I'm reaching out to a lot of friends who are saying yes. Um, and like they want to hear more information and then I get stuck and I'm like, I don't know yes. what to say. <laughs> no, Lisa, like, I'm so glad you brought this up. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad you brought this up. Yeah. So here's what I do. Um, and I, did, did I cut you off or was that pretty much good? Okay, cool. Okay. So I'll say, great. I just had this today. I was like, okay, great. How would you best like the information via text, via video, or a one-on-one -on -one chat with me? And then the girl responded and said video. And so I went to YouTube and I found my favorite one-on-one -on -one video that I did. And then I just sent her that. And so then I'm like, here, let me know, or, you know, let me know when you watch it or I'll follow up on Friday or whatever. And it gives me the opportunity to give that. But um, here are the, because the next question is where are those resources? What if they say text? What do I say? So um, a few things. Um, it's, it's, there's so many that I'm like trying to categorize where's the most efficient way. Here, how about this? Um, tomorrow before evening time, I will do a post and I will say, if someone says, yes, they want info, you can reply and say this. And then here are the resources that you can link them to. So I'll send some video links. I'll send a text link and I'll send a, let's see if they would want to watch a video text. Maybe they want to do a call in class. We have those recorded. Okay, cool. I'm glad that's helpful. Yay. That's so perfect. And thank you so much, Lisa, because that's going to give us all some ammo for 
tomorrow. All right, you guys. And I'll save that post to a unit in the OQ Brand Partners Group, which is now, it, it used to be Leadership for Oil Quintessential. Now it's called OQ Brand Partners. I'll save that post in a unit that I'm calling hashtag go for no challenge. You'll see it there. So if you just go to that group, click unit, go for no challenge, everything so far is in that unit. I will add that post to that unit. So we will find this. Yay. Oh, yay. She said, yeah, this is for everyone. Okay, cool. You guys are amazing. I love you so much. And I'm like, seriously, um, not cool being at the beach by myself. So we're going to have to make that happen for all of us. Okay. <laughs> all of us. So far, it's just my mom and me here. And we're like, we're not going to do this alone for very long. We need everyone coming with us to the beach. And the freedom that that is, like, seriously, we all need that. So, all right, in 10 minutes or so, we'll be back on the Zoom for, uh, I'll, I'll live stream that into the group called OQ. So, this group, the the, the video I'm about to do it at um, 8.15 Central is going to be grab the oils off your shelf that you got in 2020. I will be live streaming that into OQ. So, you can tag your members who maybe are in there, but they're not, you know, loving their products. Maybe they don't even know how to use frankincense yet. That will be live streamed um, so, uh, from this, this Zoom room into that group. So, all right, you guys, have an amazing, amazing night, and we'll, we'll catch you. All right, bye.